Now, our next story is about women and their representation in politics. You must have seen a video that's in fact going viral, and it is of the former New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern's address to her parliament. Bidding her farewell, she gave a message to young women across New Zealand. She said that you can be all the things that you dream of, and there's no stopping you. Listen in to Jacinda Ardern. Now, I cannot determine what will define my time in this place. But I do hope I've demonstrated something else entirely, that you can be anxious, sensitive, kind, and wear your heart on your sleeve. You can be a mother or not. You can be an ex-Mormon or not. You can be a nerd, a crier, a hugger. You can be all of these things. And not only can you be here, you can lead just like me. Now, Arden's message was that of hope, of promise. But the reality, though, is not quite, you know, what you'd expect. In 2023, in this year, less than one-third of the countries have a woman at the apex of power. Now, according to the United Nations statistics, just about 12 UN member nations have women leaders, down from 17 nations that were led by women in 2022. United Nations Women Organization has said that if we continue down the same path, then the dream of gender parity at the high office will take at least another 130 years to come true. Now, up until last year, there were some pretty big strong names in power, such as New Zealand's Jacinda Ardern, who has left office early this year because she no longer reportedly has it enough in her tank to do the job. And there is Nicola Sturgeon, who's also stepped down as the Scottish First Minister, saying that the time was in fact right for her to move away from being the First Minister then. And you cannot, of course, forget Finland's Sanna Marin, the youngest elected leader who lost a closely contested election just last week, ending her term as the world's youngest Prime Minister. It was Sanna Marin who had pushed for Finland to join the NATO military alliance, but she's now been replaced by a man when it came to taking the lead. Now, all these women have been replaced by men, bring, bringing down the gender ratio at the, in positions of power further down. They all had different reasons to leave office, but all of them, of course, have faced struggles that were mostly pretty much in the same vein. Women have faced issues of moral policing while they served their term in office. What they wear, how they talk, their personal lives have all been common to the pawn. Sanna Marin even faced widespread flack after a private video of her partying with her friends while she was in office went viral. Now, this kind of skewed media coverage can possibly have an effect on women leaders' ability to fundraise and also to secure donations for election campaigns. Now, it's not all bad, though. There have been some progress. The number of countries that have ever had a woman leader continues to grow. Just that the number of women who are actively in power in any given year is increasing at a much slower rate.